one of the biggest problems that composers and maybe percussionists also have faced is how transferable is this music? When Mozart wrote a piano sonata, he had a reasonable expectation that it would sound somehow similar when it was played on a piano in Vienna, and it would be something the same if it were played in Paris, and, and in fact it's probably not that far from the original even if it's played on a modern piano in a, in a concert hall. But when you write for medium gong, for example, and you then realize that there are probably 70 different types of medium gongs coming from different cultures, played with different mallets, having different cultural and religious backgrounds. Your expectation of what medium gong sounds like can never be as specific as what Mozart's expectation for what piano would sound like. So is this a liability? Does a composer then regret the fact that when she writes for brake drum or bottle or flower pot, that she has no idea what size of brake drum, what shape of bottle, or what texture of flower pot she will get. Well, if in fact your goal as a composer is to create a document which is ultimately transferable and produces the same result from player to player and from hall to hall and from context to context, then maybe percussion is not for you. What you will get, in fact, are these vital and lively differences, a language which is constantly being translated from one practitioner to the next, from one context to the next, so that when I hear, as I walk down the hallway of UC San Diego's music building here, I hear two people playing the same piece and using slightly or sometimes even radically different instruments. I can tell it's the same piece, but I can also hear them. I can hear the the choices, the will, the volition of the individual as reflected in the choices that they made. You know, this led originally to a lot of composers writing for instru pieces for free instrumental choice. In fact, I think by the time you get to 1990, in other words, the first 30 years of percussion solo music, nearly all of the pieces or some 80% thereabouts of the pieces were written for some variation on freely chosen instrumentation. Now, sometimes that freely chosen instrumentation had certain guidelines uh, for what kind of materials, whether they should be made of wood or skin, whether the instruments should be large or small, but performer choice of instruments was hugely important in the ultimate realization of those pieces. As instruments have become standardized, as practices have become more widespread, composers have relied less and less on those freely chosen models because, of course, now extant models exist. But still, at the root of percussion is the insertion of the performer at a very basic level of sound, identification, and cultivation. So that my version of Yanis Zanakis' Safa, with the instruments that I have chosen according to Zanakis' guidelines, is really quite different from Gert Mortensen, the great Danish percussionist's version of the same piece. It will be very different from what a student of mine will, will, will do. And so instead of fearing this um, ambivalence in the world of percussion, percussionists and percussion lovers and composers who have written for the instrument have sought to embrace it. In fact, percussion is very much like an oral tradition. Um, the fact is that those early pieces, they offered freedom of choice of instrumentation. But then when a piece has been learned and championed by uh, a percussionist, perhaps recorded and then studied subsequently in schools and academies, a kind of oral tradition takes place where gradually the choices focus, almost as though the community has decided this is the way we'll play a certain kind of piece. Naturally, there, are, there continue to be outliers, but a focused language starts to develop.